we're going to talk about uh, options and uh, some good ways to use options. So that being said, let's roll through. Uh, one second here. So, uh, you know, Reed gave me a nice brief introduction, but I appreciate that a lot. So, yes, I've been uh, actively trading for over 30 years and uh, um, ran uh, one of the trading desks, international trading desks for one of the largest oil trading companies in the world, Transworld, and did that for over 10 years uh, out of the beautiful island of Bermuda. So it was a great learning experience for me as far as trading, plus a fantastic place to live. So if you ever get a chance to go there, highly recommend it. It's a beautiful place, great people. Um, and this is, you know, basically where I got my start with options. So we were one of the first groups to trade over-the-counter options on crude oil and started doing that and kind of fell in love with options ever since. Uh, went on to launch the institutional over-the-counter crude oil options brokerage desk for PVM Oil London, which is the largest privately owned oil brokerage company in the world. And another great learning experience there as far as learning a lot more about options and option structures and then get to work with a lot of the big bank institutions and hedge funds. So, you know, uh, trading is a total journey. You never really master it, but it's something that you're constantly learning and it's it's a lot of fun and it's a challenge for your mind. It's great, uh, but it's also rewarding. So today we're going to talk about a five-step plan for option income success. Step one is avoiding the number one option trading mistake. Two is the most important option factor. Three, how option pricing works and Four, knowing and using the market maker secret. And five, the highest probability option strategies for uh, every market. Now, the following webinar is for educational purposes. Any stocks, options, futures uh, mentioned does not constitute advice and should not be construed as a recommendation. So this was me circa about 1988. And um, this is about, it was about 1987, 88 when I first started trading options on we started out on crude oil. You can kind of see the big old computers there, so you can kind of see how dated it was. But uh, this is where we started doing our option trading. This was, you know, out of a small office we had in Bermuda, but we traded lots of options and a lot of everything else. And um, that's where I got rolling on it. Now, I'd like to say that you know, trading for yourself is is and can be one of the most rewarding jobs on the planet. But you really need to stay educated about what you're trading, and and stay focused on managing your trading risk. Um, but it also can be you know, very painful at times, as I'm sure everybody here can attest to. Now, when I went out on my own and started trading my own account, the whole game really, really changed for me. Because you know, when it's your own money on the line, those losses become so much more personal. So I had to quickly learn how to better control my risk. And one of the really aha trading moments for myself actually came when I started to incorporate more income option strategies along with what I was currently doing with other option type strategies. So that's what we're going to talk about here today. So you should have plenty of time to get through everything and then take your questions at the end. So step one though is avoiding that number one option trading mistake. And uh, you know option trading has so many more advantages than trading stocks. But as you probably know it's also a bit more complicated. And for the individual trader options can be a little intimidating at times as well. Now that's why many investors trade options by purchasing out of the money options, often short term options since they cost less than the long term options and it's basically a simple strategy. So for example, out of the money calls are especially popular because they're cheap and seem to follow the old Warren Buffett paradigm that we all kind of grew up with and love and that's to buy low, sell high. But is this always the best option strategy? Well, imagine you're bullish on Facebook and it's trading at $80. Now, as a beginning option trader, you might be tempted to buy calls 30 days from expiration with a strike price of $100 and at a cost of 15 cents, which would be $15 per option contract. And why would you do this? Well, because when you look at it, you could do lots of them. So let's do the math on this. Now, purchasing 100 shares of Facebook at $80 would cost about $8,000. But for that same 8,000, you could buy 533 contracts of the 100 calls and control over 53,000 shares. And that's you know eyeball popping when you look at that kind of leverage. Now, then you imagine Facebook was to hit $101 within 30 days, and those $100 calls would then be, say, trading at $1.05 or $105 per option contract 
just prior to expiration. Well, you do the math on that, and you would be making over $47,000 in one month. So at first glance, this kind of leverage is plain awesome, but don't let this glitter fool you because not losing money is just as important as making money. Now, the one problem you have with short-term out-of-the-money calls is that you not only have to get right the direction the stock's going to move, but you also have to be right about timing, and that's going to really ratchet up the degree of difficulty. Now, to make a profit, the stock doesn't just need to go past the strike price, but it also must do so within a defined period of time. And in the case of the 100 calls on Facebook, you would need this stock to reach that 100 within 30 days to make that profit. Now, this dual objective of having to be right on direction plus timing really lessens the probability of an option trade being a winning trade when just only considering the buy side of options. And everything I teach my clients uh, is that you know it's based on really managing your risk and increasing the probability of your winning trades. So in the Facebook uh, trade example, you're wanting that stock to move more than 20% in less than a month, and this would be like a two standard deviation move. And not many stocks are likely to do that. You know, we'll see the few odds odd stocks do that occasionally, like the Netflix or something, but not many in reality in reality will will move that much. So in all probability, the stock would not reach the strike price, and the options would expire completely worthless. So based on probability, and we can measure probability using standard deviation, there's only about a 5% chance for this stock to reach 100 or 101 by expiration. So in order to make money on an out-of-the-money call, you either need to outwit the market or get plain lucky. Now also being close means no cigar with options in, in some situations. Imagine Facebook was to go to $90 within the 30 days of your option lifetime. Well, you could pat yourself on the back about being right about the direction, but since you're wrong about how far it would go within a specific time, you'd still lose your entire investment, and that's always outright painful. Now, so based on this type of example, a better goal for every trader, in my opinion, would be to select trades based on what provides the most consistent positive returns and not that one-time big winner. And consistency is derived from making high-probability trades based on reliable data and facts. Now, where there's a big disadvantage, such as the one you saw in this option buying scenario, you can usually just flip the coin and see the equal and opposite advantage. So in this case, being a seller of options gives you a huge advantage over being a buyer of options. And all the pros know this and take advantage of it, and so can you. So as a seller, all the things that you see in this example are the same, but in your favor instead of against you. So step two, then, is the most important option factor for income type generation. And this is understanding the concept of time. And it's pretty simple you know, when you look at that past example. Now, time value is the trade is, is used for trading strategies that take advantage of the accelerated time decay of an option into its expiration. And option income strategies are very tied to the time value and the impact that it has on the price of the option. So time value, which is also the extrinsic value of the option, is the premium a rational investor would pay over its current exercise value, the intrinsic value, based on its potential to increase in value before expiring. And this probability is always greater than zero, thus an option is always worth more than its current exercise value. So we're going to take a look at a chart to see how predictable and powerful this option time paradigm is, and then I want you to answer uh, a simple question. Now here's the um, time chart that can show you, you know, what happens with uh, time decay as you go out. So 120 to 90 days out, the time decay, which is called theta, we can measure it by theta, is very small, but then as you get closer in, 30 days out into your weekly options, it accelerates. It's like time decay on steroids, and before you know it, you're back down to zero. So by understanding this impact and the way it affects your options, it's key for a trader moving forward as to should you be buying or selling options. So in the underlying security price, that uh, example I just so showed you, what if the price was just to go sideways? Now, having no directional trend at all, now would you have wanted to have bought those options 120 to 90 days out, or would you have rather sold those options and taken advantage of that time K? Well, you can pretty much see the answer to that question, and this is the normal or common natural time value progression 
for all options. And it's, you know, if you're not aware of it, it's seriously like falling off a cliff blindfolded. You know, you're going to get smacked right in the face if you just continuously buy options and you're not aware of the impact that that time value has. So then step three is how option pricing works. Now the value of an option is basically the main components are time value times the implied volatility times its intrinsic extrinsic value. And these are the main components. There are other, you know, the Greeks that go into it, but this is primarily how uh, an option is valued. And once you know these variables, then you're ready to price the option and know what its option premium should be. So here's another table kind of to illustrate this further. So here you have, this is a weekly option uh, series. So every Thursday you get a new series. And your option premium is derived from these main components, time value times the implied volatility times that intrinsic extrinsic, and then you get your premium. Now on Thursday, you've got 100% time in that option premium when it first comes out. And you take that times your implied volatility, keep the intrinsic extrinsic one for a constant, and you can see you come up with a premium on that option of $300. Now, if you go down on Monday, you can see that time value part portion of the option is cut in half. And even if the implied volatility spikes in this example to 800, you still barely get a budge or move to the upside on your premium. So you're basically, you know, swimming against a major tide when you're constantly buying options because that time value is going against you. So that's something for you to always understand and know that's out there to affect you. Now step four is the market maker's secret, and it's what they really don't want you to know about because uh, it's how they make a lot of their money. Now broad markets will tend to have a two to three week cycle, and then will trade sideways and channel 70 80 percent of the time. So you'll see the markets you know, spike up, spike down, and then they'll consolidate and kind of oscillate sideways, kind of recollecting energy. So it's based on this sideways price movement that the out-of-the-money option buyers are going to lose approximately 7% of the time. And the market makers, they know these statistics, and therefore they're going to tend to trade as much as they can from the sell side to take advantage of it. And this is the professional money, so you really need to kind of think like they're thinking in order to take advantage of what they're taking advantage of. And it all comes down to math again. So the market makers use mathematical market probability statistics for pricing out the movement of an option to its expiration. And we all now have the same opportunity with our you know, option trading platforms to see exactly what they're seeing. Now knowing the probability of an underlying security finishing within a certain range at expiration is what is key when you're determining what options to buy or sell and what option strategies to implement. So this is the first step. And it's these statistics that forecast how likely it is that an option will fall within a certain price, up or down, by its expiration. This statistical forecast is what is referred to as the implied move of the stock or the underlying security. And it's this implied move which is an estimate or theoretical estimate of a plus or minus one standard deviation move of that security by its expiration date. So here's an example. So Based on these probability statistics, the short vertical spread, or what's known as the credit spread, when used correctly, can provide the trader or investor the greatest probability of success, and it's one of the best ways to generate a steady stream of income monthly, and it all comes down to the math of probabilities. So this is a standard uh, a bell curve you know, to show uh, distribution of data. So when you look at this bell curve, Let's see at the top is the at-the-money price in this example of Google. So pricing of an option always starts at the money, and that's where all the supply-demand starts. And then the next strikes are, you know, determined from that. So you go out from the calls and the puts, and this is what's called the option skew. Now, your inputs are given to you on your option platform. In this example, the implied move is given to you, and it's plus or minus 4% by 10 days till expiration. Google's trading at 500, so if you take this plus or minus 4%, 4% to the downside gives you that price of 480, 4% to the upside gives you the price of 520. And it's this price point between 480 to 520 is your expected move, and that's your one standard deviation move from 480 to 520, and that's a 68.2% theoretical probability. So by knowing this information, you can set your price targets and you'll know or notice that 
520 is kind of that outer band, and once you get past that, your probability of winning is going to go down lower and lower. And the same goes if you start buying puts below 480. So you'll see that they're really cheap, but they're cheap because they uh, present a lot of risk. There's a, a lot of risk against you making money because the, the probability of it going further out, outside that one standard deviation, goes down uh, extremely fast. So, you know, trading is a business of probabilities, and to be successful, a trader needs to focus on controlling your risk. And one important step to doing this is, is to know the winning probabilities of any trade taken. And one simple and free tool for doing this is the option delta. Now, the option delta is, you know, one of the best Greeks because it will, one, tell you the value of the option based on its underlying move, and it also can be used to measure the probability of a price move of the underlying stock or security itself. So here's an example of that. So if you have an option delta, you, you can look on your option platform and see the deltas. And if it's saying a delta of 68 or 70, you can basically say that equates to the strike has a 68 to 70 percent probability of being in the money at expiration or being in within a standard deviation by expiration. So the other side of it is an option delta of about plus or minus 16 is equivalent to that outside point that we saw right here, that 15.9 or 15.9. That's the outside point, so that's that one standard deviation point outside. So you can use these to give yourself an idea of probability of maybe a trade that you're looking at doing being a winning trade based on this information. So here's how it all kind of pulls together. If you take an option platform, and I did this in this example, and you this is on Thinkorswim. So you have pulled up Google, and it was trading at 582.45. That's at the money. You came down here, and you can see that 22, so 22 days to expiration. Now, down below here, price slices. This is how you can uh, set your theoretical standard deviations on your option platform, and it'll do all this work for you internally with the platform. So I put it on one standard deviation right here, plus or minus one, and then one negative down here. And you can see based on this price input and days to expiration and the implied volatility that it gave you a move to 622.28 as to that outside point to the upside, 542.80 to that outside point to the downside. That's one standard deviation. Now, if you look at the strike prices here in the middle, you come down to 622 right there where that is. We come down to the 620 strike. We go over to the delta area of the calls. You can see that it's giving you a delta of 18. So it falls, it's in sync very close to that one standard deviation move. So it's a good back of the envelope way to measure potential uh, probability. So if I was to go out and buy the 620 strikes on Google when it's trading at 582, 22 days to expiration, it's telling me I've only got about an 18% chance that this will be, you know, in the money by that period of time. So I know the probability quickly. Now, yeah, using this probability analysis, it provides a trader a very useful trading tool um, for uh, for trading tool for determining your price targets. That's what I use it for. That's what this gives you the ability to give yourself targets to trade to. And these are all kind of defined by these mathematical models. So it's a great tool to use and it's free. So by using this, you know, based on the math of probability, you can see that approximately 68.2% of an option bought or options bought will expire worthless. And based on this, it's a really good idea for all traders or even investors to consider selling options just as well as always buying. So it's this added option strategy, it can really make a dramatic and positive difference in your trading performance when you use it correctly. Now step five then is uh, selecting the right income strategy you know, for, for you. Now the goal of every trader should be again to select trades based on what provides the most consistent positive returns because consistency is what's going to keep you in business and not always those great huge home run trades. And one of the best ways to achieve this is by knowing the income option strategies that are there and available and then selecting the one that's best suited for your trading style and trading plan. 
so everybody here today, you know, we're all going to have different size capital accounts, uh, different risk profiles for us, how much risk we're willing to take, different times of day that we can trade. So a lot of different things to consider. So all that should go into, you know, what you're trading, what you're planning to trade. Um, and that's what you want to look at. So the basic um, income option strategies that are out there, the most common, you'll have the cover calls, counter spreads, diagonal spreads, long iron condors, and credit spreads. So they're all really good uh, strategies, but certain situations are better for certain strategies. And, um, you know, cover call is great when you have a nice, consistent moving up market if you're doing cover call strategies. But when the market goes down, it might not be the best strategy for you. So you need to know the strategies and what kind of market conditions they're best to apply them uh, in. Um, now, my favorite of these strategies, income strategies, is the credit spread. It's for three primary reasons. One, they can regard they can work regardless of market direction. Two, they can almost always work even if you're wrong. That's huge. And three, the probability is over 68% even without adding technical analysis, which then can increase those probabilities even more. So you could see from some of those examples, if you were to sell something that had a 68% probability that uh, it would be, you know, a winning trade without even technical analysis, what if you had a system that gave you a 70-80% probability? That increases your probability of winning even, even more. So with the credit spreads, there are three basic types. You've got the bear call credit spread, you've got the bull put credit spread, and you've got the long iron condor. Now the bear call credit spread is, you know, best if you think the market's going to go up. I mean, excuse me, go down. So, you know, it's, a, it's a, a bias to the downside. And basically all it is is you're selling one call with a lower strike while, while simultaneously buying another call with a higher strike and in the same month. So your, your view is the market's going to go down, so this is a way to participate in the downside. Now here's an example. So here is selling a bear call credit spread uh, on the uh, S, uh, SBX, SPX, which is the CBOE, uh, 500 um, S&P, which this is one of my favorite indexes to do this type of trade setups on. So in this situation, you can see that the market was up here at 1988, and here you're selling, uh, you're thinking the market's going to go either sideways to down, so you're selling way up here the 2045 call and buying above it the green line, the 2050. So you've got a defined risk hedge trade where you're short a bear call credit spread. Now, as long as the market trades down here and closes below that red line, in this situation, you collect $100 credit. The max at risk is the difference of $400 between that $500 wide spread. That's what you put up as margin. That's your capital at risk. And so as long as it trades below that red line, you keep the 100. That's a 25% return on your capital risk. And that's without defending it in case you're wrong. So a hedge strategy and 25% returns are nice consistent and that's the kind of stuff you can get with these type credit spreads are even greater. Now the, the second one is the bull put credit spread and it's best when you think the market's going to go up. It's a bull strategy and in this one you're selling a put while simultaneously buying another put but with a lower strike in the same month as your hedge. And here's an example of that. So if you're bullish and this is uh, on a situation with when it's trading right here at $207 and you think it's going to go up, well, you could buy the stock or you could buy at the money calls, out of the money calls, but you're looking for it to go up. Now, the other thing you can do is sell a way out of the money bull put credit spread. So you're down here below that low there and way below where the at the money price is right there, selling a put at 187 and then buying as protection the 182 put below you. Now, again, this is a $5 wide spread. You were able to get $130 credit that goes straight to your bank account. The difference in the spread minus your credit received is your 370. That's your maximum capital at risk, and that's the margin you put up. And as long as when in this situation closes above that red line, that's going to be 130 divided by 370 at risk. That's a 35% return. 
So you can see you've got a lot of room down here in case you're not exactly right on direction and it comes down and goes sideways or down a little bit more back up, you can still profit from this trade because of that time decay, taking advantage of it through selling premium. Now the third one is your long iron condor, known for being a non-directional, um, low risk type trading strategy. And basically what this does is it just combines those two strategies, the bull put credit spread with the bear call credit spread together and creates the long iron condor. So it's really a good strategy too for you can leg in and out of. So here's an example using Amazon. And Amazon was trading down here about 331 in this example and just kind of going sideways, really no, nowhere. So you could trade you know, by selling your bear call credit spread up here at 345, selling that call short for protection you buy the 350 above it. And then below, you're selling your bull put credit spread. You're selling the 320 put short by the 315 below, so you're hedged on both. And by doing it, you collected a total of $150 credit. The difference between the spread, it's a $500 wide spread, is your capital at risk or margin put up. So it's the max you can lose if you do nothing at all. So if you're totally wrong and you don't try to do any kind of defensive adjustments, you could only lose 350. If you're right and it stays below here, you keep that 150, that's a 43% return on your margin at risk, which is the only capital that you put up. So these are great returns and you've got a lot of leeway for the market to kind of oscillate back and forth and still make a winning trade. So the next thing I want to do is show you the risk reward versus uh, two long directional option strategies to show you what happens. So I'm going to show you a strategy one will be just the old traditional buying directional long calls. You think the market's going to go up, so you just buy long calls. The second strategy though is you still think the market's going to go up, but you're going to sell the out of the money bull put credit spread to take advantage of an up market. So here's what the risk reward looks like on these two strategies. So strategy one, you're going to buy the at the money June 207 call strike. This is on win. It's at 11.40, so that's $1,140 per option contract. Now, um, it's a great strategy if it goes up because you have infinite upside potential. Your max at risk is premium paid of $1,140. But you know, for a lot of traders, that might be a lot of money to spend uh, for just one option contract. Now, strategy two is still a bullish strategy, but in this situation, you're going to sell the out of the money bull put credit spread. You're selling the 187 put buying the 182 for hedge. And this spread was sold um, and wins at low price was 189. And it was also when it was sold, it was nine and a half percent below where Wynn was trading at the time at 207. So here's what that looks like on your risk profile in your PL. Now, strategy one, you can see that um, on this day, uh, when you put the trade on, when was trading at 207. So you went long that uh, 207 calls, $1,140. Market went up, you were looking great, but then the market rolls back over, and on May 8th, all of a sudden, within a blink of your eye, when's trading at 196. You open up your P&L and you look at it, all of a sudden you're down $583. So, you know, that, that hurts. And it doesn't, as you know, these markets can go turn around on you fast, so it doesn't take much time for that to happen. Now, on May 21st, wind finally comes back up a little bit, and it's trading now on the 21st right here at $205. Well, it's only about $2 below where you put it on, so you open up your P&L, and you're still you're down $518. You barely improved, so that still is you know ugly as far as your P&L, and that's smarts. Now, here's strategy two, and this is what happens with it. It's also a bullish trade. But you can see the difference here. Wind's trading at 207 right here, but you're selling way down here that out of the money bull put credit spread. So it's below that prior low, 9.5% below where Wind was trading at the money. You were able to get $130 credit right to your bank. Your maximum, you know, at risk going into it is 370. As long as it closes above this red line, you're okay, and that would be a 35% return. But let's see what happens when wind falls off. Now, on May 8th, when 
rolls over and craters to the downside and it's trading down here. So you're holding your bet, you open up your P&L, you look over, you're only down $38.50 versus the other guys down 583. So huge difference there. Now on May 21st, you come in and win now is trading back up, you know, to 205 and you open up your P&L and right now now you're up 7850 you're back in the green but uh, the other guy is still down 518 so you can see the difference between these two bullish strategies so you know in certain situations it's not a bad idea to not only buy options but you know look at selling options so the other thing i, I call it uh, the most forgiving trading strategy ever and that's the credit spread so here's a recent example, and this is again, this is one of my favorite indexes to use the SPX. And what I, you know, it's, this year has been really great for this trading strategy because if you've noticed the markets, it's been really kind of this sideways range bound kind of pattern almost all, well, for the past several months. So every time it's been coming up to that 2130 level or whatever, the market tends to stall out. So what I do, this is my system, when it shifts over with momentum, each time it's coming up to these kind of cycle highs, I call it, momentum starts to shift, I sell out of the money uh, bear call credit spread. And this situation, this was back on August 3rd, about two weeks ago, right here, I sold the 2140, right there short, bought the 2145 bear call credit spread. Mark was 200. I got out of the big chunk of this position uh, last week on the 12th when the market cratered down here um, and I'll show you how this turned out so the spread setup was like this what I look for is you know to like 95 to 100 dollars or more credit and I go about 20 25 days out so in this particular situation uh, I was able to uh, get 110 dollars uh, credit and so it was a $500 widespread. So my at risk is $390. It was close to one standard deviation out of the money when I sold it, not quite. It's a little below that. So if this expires at expiration um, at um, below my uh, short strike of 2140, I keep the $110 here. That's a 28% return uh, on my capital risk at 390. Now the market fell off hard last week to the 12th and I was able to take it off before which is a lot of times you can do and that gave a profit of a hundred dollars which is 25 percent return on capital and that only took nine days of my capital being tied up so you can see here the spread was put on a dollar ten now uh, if you did ten contracts uh, that's a thousand one hundred dollars and your max loss would be the difference at that 390. So uh, on the 10th, the uh, market fell off hard. I mean the 12th, and the spread went from 110 credit received to 10 cents. So you just buy that back. You're able to keep the difference. That's 100 dollars, and you can see the return of 100 dollars on your maximum capital at risk of 390 is a 25 percent return. And those give you a pretty good profit just based on how many contracts that you look to do. So it's a really great strategy. It's been perfect this year so far. Every time it's gotten up to that 2130-ish type level, momentum starts to slack off. It's been a great trade setup to put on. Uh, now the other way is also the one that's pretty cool is the deep in the money uh, income option strategy. And this is also a vertical debit spread. Uh, and I call it the positive risk ratio. And this is an example on Baidu. Now this is what I call positive or bullish price target positive risk ratio strategy. So you'll notice that in the other trade setups, it's a negative risk ratio, right? So you're like in that um, SPX trade, uh, you're risking your, your potential capital at risk was 390 and your potential profits 110. So that's negative. Now you can flip that the other way by going deep in the money and this is how that works. So here is an example on Baidu. It was a really nice volatility compression here. Looked like it was going to break out 
and it did break out. So you could have just gone long, whatever, but the other way you could have done it is like this. By selling it deep in the money, bull put credit spread. So in this example, to show you, Baidu at the time was trading at 219.50. These were weekly options. And the spread was based on set, setting the legs up based on Fibonacci support resistance. So it was selling at 222 and a half uh, puts, and that was um, three dollars in the money because it was traded at 219.50 at the time. So in selling that deep in the money, you were able to collect 181 dollars credit. It was a two and a half dollar wide spread. So the maximum capital at risk is the difference of 69 dollars. So if it Closed above your short strike 222.50, which at expiration it was, it's 226.50. Uh, that's max profit of 181 divided by your capital at risk 69. So it's over 200% return or 2.62 to 1 positive risk reward. So that's another way to structure these type of trades um, for a bullish trade. So you can see here that your capital at risk. You're with selling the uh, that spread, you were able to collect 181. The difference is 69. As long as it closed above your short strike, in this situation, it was 180 dollars profit on a contract. So another really different way, but a great way to take advantage of trading directionally, but using credit spreads versus just the old go long stock ETF or go long um, options. So you know, what I wanted to cover here today is just give you another idea of how to look at the markets and trade the markets. And if you're interested in options, not only considering buying options, but also consider selling options because there are a lot of great situations to take advantage of selling and collecting premium. So what I want to share with you here is just a few um, comments and some input from some of my clients. Just take a couple of minutes if you can and, and read this. I think it'll be worth your time and then, then we'll get into all your questions here and some other things you can do to uh, start you know, helping your trading if you're interested in these kind of credit spreads. So um, the next step is I'd like to talk to you about some things you can do now to kind of generate a stream of income for yourself each and every month by taking advantage of credit spreads. So what I'm going to show you here, and then we'll get into all your questions, is a course that I did, uh, and this is 100% on using these kind of income option credit spreads. So it was a five-hour course. Uh, it was recorded, and then it's broken up in like 30-minute modules, so you can follow along, you know, with the course. Uh, and you also will get the 183-page PowerPoint manual, this very detailed course manual. So I'm also going to give you uh, my 13 option strategy diagram, and all this plus an extra bonus that I'll show you in a second. So for the first 30 that signed up here today, uh, you're going to get this course, five-hour course all the manual trading manual PowerPoint. You're going to also get a follow-up live accountability support Q&A call. We'll have that probably in about a week, two weeks to give yourself a chance to get through this course. And then the other thing you're going to have is I'm going to give you another course for free. So you're basically going to get two courses for the price of this one, and it's $97. So you're going to get the trading credit spreads for income course. Uh, it's a fantastic course, five hours. 30-minute modules, 183-page training manual, plus my second course. I did this course just about three weeks ago. It's a trader's guide to technical analysis. So if you're not using Fibonacci, if you've been wanting to learn Fibonacci, this is a fantastic course where I'll teach you Fibonacci, which is something I use for all my trading as well. And it's a three-and-a-half-hour course, also recorded 30-minute modules, step-by-step -step course on using Fibonacci analysis, trend line analysis, and moving averages plus the training manual, 119-page PowerPoint. So you're going to get two-for-one course special package, 
follow-up Q&A live so you can come in ask whatever questions you have because there are always going to be questions and the great thing if you're not happy with it you just send us an email and we'll refund your $97 so it's a win-win situation it's um, you know I don't think you can do better than that both courses are excellent stand on their own so I've got 30 spots so I can keep it small enough where I can make sure I can take care of and answer all your questions now in the course here this is what we'll cover in the credit spread courses how to use those credit spreads to create low risk high probability trade setups then how to use credit spreads on stocks index options you know such as that SPX trade example or NDX and then when you know can you use those deep in the money credit spreads and how do you structure those so that's in there now it's great to also show you in this course how you can take a steady and consistently grow a small account you can these these type of trades you can put up very little capital at risk so it's great for small accounts to large accounts and you can use this type of kind of strategy to kind of increase your your uh, your trading account on a gradual basis uh, and then a big part of this course is how do you defend those trades so you know you know what your defined risk is going in but sometimes you're going to be wrong and I teach you six defensive strategies uh, that are outlined case by case with a lot of trade examples on how to use these defensive strategies and then when and how to use iron condors is not always something you're going to want to use and then the big thing too that I like to use with credit spreads is to add those with my other trading type of strategies for position sizing to reduce and diversify my risk and a great trade opportunity here is how to take a, that 70 percent probability of winning going into a trade and turn that into a bigger winner like a 90% winning probability so I'll show you that in the course step-by-step -step guide how to execute these spreads and technical analysis techniques you know some Fibonacci that I use for setting targets best market time frames for the spreads and how to do these trades into the day so you don't have to sit there at your screen all day so it's a um, a lot I know but it's a fantastic opportunity if you've never traded options or if you're an expert trader you're going to still get a lot of great stuff out of these two courses and the great thing too is that if it doesn't work for you you just send us an email and we'll send your money back 97 so if you want to get uh, trading credit spreads or just learn about them so you know about it and see if you want to use it here's a course you can do that and this course right here is excellent on using Fibonacci so I hope you guys uh, find this all something you can use and um, please uh, sign up today I've got 30 spots and once those are gone that's uh, that's the end of it I guess as far as uh, what I can do so um, appreciate everybody being here let's see what questions we have here I've got a couple minutes or well Yeah, you can look at anything, Theta. You can look at all these different uh, option Greeks uh, without having uh, Thinkorswim, you know, Trade Station. Any of the platforms will have this information for you. It's just a matter of knowing how to use that platform. So if you use Trade Station, uh, Swab, whatever, all all that information is going to be on your option platform. I don't know about MetaTrader. MetaTrader may just be a futures platform such as Ninja Trader, but if it's a major, you know, um, major brokerage company, they're going to have an option uh, platform you can use. Here's the link again. It's PowerCycleTrading.com forward slash PICK pick small caps, ninety-seven dollars, and you get, you know all this good information trading credit spreads for income five-hour course traders got technical technical analysis Fibonacci if you're not using Fibonacci definitely something you should be using with your trades and then if you're not using credit spreads here's a perfect course setup to get involved and see if this is something for you and incorporate it with the trading you're already doing it'll definitely help your your profit and diversify your risk so Um, and you know if you've ever somebody asked a question uh, with selling premium if you've never seen the uh, audio interview with Karen the super trader go check that out uh, it's a tasty trade interview 
excellent. She was started out trading options, but just by buying, and um, she ended up just learning that selling options to her was a lot better than buying options, and now she's managing a couple hundred million just selling premium. But you know, this is courses based on credit spreads and and things like that, which are hedged. But that's kind of how she started out. So it's a great great place to, to, to get an idea of what you can potentially do. Yeah, the bonus offer, you can see here, is a two for, two for one special course package. Now, when you pull up the buy link, it's not going to show you the bonus because this is a bonus just I added for today. So when you, when you pull up that buy link, all you're going to see is a trading credit spread course. The bonuses you're going to get is not going to be shown on that buy link, but you'll get it the first 30, and I'm keeping track of that. I've got um, got about five left, but if we go over, it's okay for one or two, and then you'll get this trader's guide to technical analysis, and then we'll give you, we'll send out an email when we're going to have that follow-up support live Q and A. Be probably in about two weeks to give yourself time to go through, you know, uh, the trading credit spreads course and the technical analysis course, and then you can come in and ask questions on any of that uh, at that Q and A. So it's a win-win situation. Hopefully, you'll take advantage of it. 30-day uh, guarantee? No, it's as long as you want. So uh, if, it, if it goes, you know, rarely does it happen, but uh, I don't think you're going to want your money back because, I mean, these two courses are, are really great. So, but if you come back uh, two months from now, you send us an email, send your money back. So want our customers to be happy. And it's a $97 course, but you're going to get, you'll be amazed at, at how, content full this is. And I teach with a lot of trading examples because I'm a visual learner. So I also teach the same way with a lot of visual uh, trade setups to show you actual trades and how these things work. 